Well, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me in my shop here. It is Friday, May 26th. And uh, yesterday, uh, when I worked on this radio, um, I attempted to uh, replace the capacitor uh, that's responsible for the oscillating effect that's occurring in the radio, and uh, no, <laughs> I got it wrong. I, uh, I was after a 0 0.01 a microfarad capacitor. I ended up pulling out a 0 0.05 out of the radio and replaced it anyway. There it is. But the problem that I'm after continues. Now, I, I took a while. I conjectured right at the end of the last video that maybe those capacitors back there on the antenna, it's one here and one here, maybe though, no. Those are nothing to do with it. Those are both input capacitors. We have the out, the external antenna connector here, connectors. The two capacitors connect there. They don't go anywhere. They don't go anywhere. They don't do anything unless you hook up a wire there for an antenna. Okay. Well, we haven't got too many more to choose from. Um, it would be. Let's just get a little closer here. Well, it's got to be this one, this one, or, or that one way over there. It can't be that one, can it? That's just not in the right spot at all. So, uh, 0.01. This looks like it could be a 0.01. It says 0.01 on it. And it's connected to the yellow wire, and it runs over to the volume control. So and this is the center terminal on the volume control here. So we know what this one is. This is not the capacitor I'm after. This guy uh, is uh, one side's connected down to the chassis. It's a big capacitor. It's probably, I was going to say it's probably the one silencing the screens, but it turned out this was the one that was doing the screen job. So what's going on with this? I don't know. Hmm. Could it be this one that was already replaced down here? Well, it could be. Can I see the size of that? It says Tropicap. Tropicap? I've never heard of that brand. Micah Mold Tropicat. Tropicap. Fancy name, but I think the value is underneath it. Well, maybe it's this one. This one's connected to a black wire. It's disappearing through the hole, through a hole, and heading upwards, upwards into one of the IFs. The IF hole here and another one over here. So this capacitor is related to something to do with the IF transformer. Kind of odd that it comes out on this wire. I mean, was the original one installed like that? <clears throat> Not terribly likely. So th this is a bit of an oddball, what's happened here. It's almost as if they took this wire off this terminal and stuck this capacitor in based on the length of this wire. Well, that's not helping at all. I'm just looking very carefully to see if I... Am I overlooking another capacitor in here? I mean, it's just such a small radio. No, only this ugly thing up here. Okay, well, let's figure out what these are. We already know this one's carrying the audio from the volume control, probably right to the grid of this, this tube. Let's see, this one is connected up to a particular pin on this tube, so we should be able to, and, oh my gosh, it's connected to, look at this, oh no, don't look at this, don't look at this. <laughs> I was going to say, this one was in parallel with that, but no, not at all. Interestingly enough, this capacitor connects where two resistors are installed, it connects at the joining point of two resistors, so that should be fairly easy to spot too on the schematic. But let's go for this guy. Capacitor to ground off of this tube. Which tube is that? Which tube is that? This tube here. One, two. It's tube number two. Okay, let's take a look in the uh, schematic here. You 
You know, there are times when I'm doing this when I say, oh, I should have had the cameras running for that. And one of those just happened. So I just very innocently reached over. I grabbed this capacitor. I wanted to twist it to see what its value was. And as I pulled slightly on it, dun, it came undone. So this, this solder here, well, you know, it may have been electrically okay or it may have been not okay at all. It may have been cold. Could have been some resistance in this connection. <clears throat> Who's to say now? Well, this one is a 0.1. That's a big capacitor. Let's find out where this is on the uh, schematic here. Okay, so we look down here for a, there it is, C11. So I'm gonna find C11, here it is. C11, what's it doing? Oh, it's going, it's going to the, hmm, this is going to the chassis. These guys are hooked up to the chassis. Yeah, this is hooked up. Oh, well, that's a shield. Uh, what else is hooked up here? Hmm. Okay. Uh, for a moment there, I thought maybe this is an isolated chassis radio where they isolate the chassis with a capacitor and a resistor. What's the value of R11? R11, R11, 150,000. What does that say? 25 watt resistor, is that what that says? There's no 25 watt resistor in here. Well, there is a big whopper. Appears to be connected right to the uh, power line. And it, you know, could be. It could, could be. Could be not this one. Okay, a little bit confused about what's going on here. C11, great big thing. It does go to the chassis, just like the one I have. And what's it doing? It's right on the B minus. That is the B minus, isn't it? Um, maybe not. This is the B minus here, right? I would have thought R nine would be that big, high wattage resistor I'm looking at. R nine. One watt resistor, 1800 ohms. Surely to goodness this doesn't really. Maybe it's 2.5 watts. 25 watt resistor? I mean, that's a small heater. Um, well, it's supposed to be right across this capacitor, so it should be connected. Well, then this line is here, so it could be anywhere in the radio where this line goes. This line does go right back. R10. This must be the heater dropper. What's R10? R10. 40 ohms. 4 watts. Yeah, this can't be 20. This is probably the big one I'm seeing. Uh, it's it's in the right. Yeah, it's hooked up. It's hooked up to here. So so that big one I'm seeing is this one. So R11 is a mis mystery. 150,000 ohms. 20. Maybe 0.25. Look at all. Oh, these are all 25 watt. No, they're not. It must be the dot is missing. So it's a quarter watt resistor. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. This is just a regular everyday resistor, 150K. This is roughly the amount you would use in a bypass of a capacitor. This is just bigger than what I'm normally seeing. I think that's what that is. So this is connecting the chassis back to the B minus line. And the objective is you just don't want the chassis floating around out there. Uh, would this cause the problem that we're seeing? Uh, well, I, I don't know offhand. Big capacitor doing a big job. 
The other one is on the volume control. It's this one here. This I think is a 0.01. That looks like C14 there, or yeah, C14.01. Exactly what I'm seeing. We have a C15 here. That's a mica capacitor. And a C16.01. This is the one I think has been changed, but I'm not sure. It's changed by somebody else. Well, very mysterious. We are not locating which one was it. I can't even remember now which one it was. Let's look at C6 for a sec. That's a, that's a mica. C7, mica. C10, 100 volt. This is the one I was looking for, wasn't it? I had never found it. Uh, okay. <laughs> Change them all and see what happens. I, I'm not going to be able to sort this out for some unknown reason. Black of coffee, something like that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, if it really hasn't gone the way I would hope it would, I'm just going to change this. We'll test the radio. This is the one that's kind of fallen out of the radio on its own. Point one. We'll stick in there and we'll try the radio and see what happens. Okay, new capacitors there. Let's try this out. happens. Now I put a fairly low voltage capacitor in there on the assumption that it's still good enough. There we go. Switch is on. Power is on. Dim bulbs did their thing already. You missed it. Okay, what about that crazy oscillation? I think there's a little bit there. <clears throat> Much better though. Now that, that tone that's on top of the signal, probably interference. Let's go somewhere quiet. There's no place. There's an oscillation, I think. Hard to say for sure. In this position, there's no oscillation. It's on the verge. And maybe it's a... Uh, I can't hear it. Sure, that's an oscillation. I don't think we got it yet. Now I have read numerous times that in some radios the IF is just going to oscillate if you peak it up. And so when you encounter that problem, you simply detune the IF a little bit, bring the Q down a bit, and voila, you'll escape the oscillation, the radio still work. But in fact you're giving up some of the radio's performance some of it. Okay, well, more capacitors to go, but first it's time to drink some coffee. Okay, so I've changed out the capacitor that carries the sound from the volume control. Put this little guy in here. Get these wires twisted. Okay, the next one we're going to go after this terrible looking one here. This one looks like it ties to two adjacent terminals here. Cut this 
here. This one's connected. It looks like it's right across the power line. Is that what's going on here? Okay, you know what? We've got these capacitors out, this and two others. Let's give them a test over here. See what we've been removing from this radio. Uh, based on previous tests, these will all fail quite nicely. Start with the one I just took out. This is a uh, this is a good grief. I don't know what it is. It's all smashed up in here. But it would look, you know, I don't know. I don't know. What you can do with these is you scrape off all this gunk. And you can get down to the paper where the print is, and you can read them again. So that's what I'll have to do with this one. I want to get the size right from the capacitor. Okay, 50 volts. Will the eye close? Right. Will it open? That's really quite open right up. Okay, how about 150 volts? Doesn't like that. Gives you kind of a qualitative, qualitative view of the capacitor. Bad. That's how it would be. Again, it depends upon what circuit it's in. In some cases, a tiny leak can be very, very important. Okay, this big guy, 50 volts, what do you say? It opened part way, so it's not going to open. Well, that was 150. We go 50. It looks good. 150, though, partially it's uh, 250. Let's let it have it. It's a 400 volt capacitor and it's not opening anymore. So, not as bad. I mean, is there any surprise? You know, nicely sealed, the ends have remained on this one. This guy, not so much. We should, we should do another experiment with these. I have a good meter, come to think of it, for doing an interesting experiment with these capacitors. Okay. Fifty volts. Halfway open, one fifty won't open at all. So all leaky, no surprise. You know, try that experiment later if I can think of it, if I do think of it. So what this means now, well, I still have this one last one to put in. Oh, I have to figure out the size of it. Let's do that. Okay, once again, the Swedish fish knife is needed. It says 600 volts there, and so the capacitance is just right in here. Point oh two. Point oh two. Let's see where that is on the schematic because in here, one, one lead is right on the power line. So who's connected right to the power line? Let's check that out. Who's connected to this guy? C17, C17, point oh two five. Did I not scrape off enough? <laughs> Did I stop short at the 2? I'd scrape just a wee bit further. You know what? I think that's the case. So 0.0225, that's kind of a precise 
number uh, or a, a 0.03 would certainly do the job there. Okay, 0.025, let's look at it again. This is a, this is a classic, you know, how, how do accidents happen? Well, I didn't scrape off enough to see the last number. And that's, there it is, 0.25, and that's why the that's why the rocket crashed. We lost the patient. I didn't know about the five. Okay. Now we'll put in a capacitor there. We'll try the radio again. Okay, I've got that capacitor in there. It was pretty tough. But I did it. Now, what about this resistor here? So I looked at the schematic and I figured out that this is a cathode bias resistor and it should be 180 ohms. 180 would be brown, gray, black. Brown, gray, black. So actually the colors are kind of there. Let's see if it's anywhere near the right value. A resistor in this position, cathode resistor, can typically uh, get too hot and, and uh, go high. We should be able to read it in circuit here. So instead of 180, it's reading two, you know, 210, 220. When it gets hot, uh, which, it, which it may be doing, well, that's, there you are, 180. There we are. 180 with an extra 5 on top. Fantastic. Okay, nothing wrong with it. Okay, so we've got this guy in. Got this one in. Got this guy in. I'm just checking to make sure they're solid. And the last one is this one here. We're good to go. Okay. Now, there's really no junky capacitors in here, I believe. These two don't matter out here. Let's get the oh-so-dangerous solder out of here. Okay. We're ready. Plugged in. Power's on. Dim bulbs are in view. There they go. Well, let's see if this solved the uh, various problems here. 111 volts. Pretty good at picking up the interference. Is that, is that really possible? You fix a radio up and it picks up the interference better? Okay, but it's not aligned. Might get a little bit out of it now. Let's just get off that area. We'll just go Right there. Now you can be fooled by tuning to a quiet spot on the band because what you really might have is a strong interference signal that has no modulation. And it'll make the radio seem quieter. See what happens here. Still squawking and squealing. Worse than ever, if anything. Let's go back to that station. Ear piercing. Huh. Uh, 
Well, I'd say there's just a beautiful oscillation in there. I've cleaned it up really nice now, so the oscillation is clear and clean and can be heard beautifully. Even the radio station cannot interfere with the beautiful squeal I've managed to develop in this radio. Fantastic. Well, that's it for today. Tomorrow we'll do some more exploring in this. It's becoming of interest to me. I really don't care about the radio itself. It's just an opportunity to experiment and learn. And uh, what do you think could cause that effect? Okay. Well, we'll try to find out tomorrow a little more about it. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you on the next video.